So, John, what, how was the media at that time covering, covering this? I mean, obviously, we don't have the, the Fox, CNN, CBS, ABC. Any, we don't have the kind of media that we have today. Who's, right. who's writing about it, opposing uh, uh, President Wilson while he's saying everything's fine, don't worry about it? Who's opposing and telling stories about what's really going on? Pretty much nobody in 1918. Uh, uh, you know, the, the newspapers in the country... Uh, number one, they were patriotic and wanted to support the war effort. Number two, they had that law that I told you about a minute ago, that if you criticize the government, you could go to jail and a congressman was sentenced to prison. Uh, so in most cases, in most cities, the uh, newspapers simply went along with the program and printed lies. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, in Philadelphia, which was one of the hardest hit cities in the United States, hundreds are dying every day in Philadelphia, probably about 15,000 total. When they finally, and they're using steam shovels to dig mass graves, you literally have priests in Philadelphia driving horse drawn carts down the street, calling upon people to bring out their dead. So when they finally, in Philadelphia, closed saloons, closed theaters, closed schools, and so forth and so on. One of the newspapers actually said, a direct quote, this is not a public health measure. You have no cause for a panic or alarm, unquote. And yet people, you know, their neighbors are dropping dead. You know, there are mass graves being dug. They are using reusing coffins because they didn't have any coffins. And the newspaper is saying this is not a public health measure. So, I mean, how stupid did they think their readers were? The readers knew what was going on. Uh, another example in, in Little Rock, you know, I, I quoted uh, a doctor in an in, uh, in army camp uh, a couple of miles out, actually, I guess seven or eight miles outside of Little Rock, uh, talking about thousands in the in the base hospital. The, you know, card is overflowing with with beds, beds outside the hospital, uh, and he writes, "There is nothing here but death and destruction." Just a few miles away in Little Rock, Arkansas, the Arkansas Gazette prints this big headline: "Spanish influenza, same old." chills and grip and and you know it's just total dismissive just like it, it was ordinary influenza uh you know th there are a couple of exceptions uh there's a small city in wisconsin where the uh newspaper started to print the truth and the army started to institute prosecution against them uh under that law i mentioned a little while ago uh although the prosecution was dropped as the pandemic proceeded, uh, San Francisco is is a uh, was pretty exceptional. And San Francisco, uh, which got hit pretty late, actually, the uh, in you know most cities as I say they're saying things like this is ordinary influenza by another name. San Francisco, the mayor, the business leaders, trade union leaders, and the medical community all got together signed a joint statement, huge typeface in the newspaper saying, wear a mask and save your life. Uh, whether this, is the mask, in, this is in 18. This is in 1918. 1918 right. Wear a mask and save a life. Save, save your life. Save your life. <laughs> uh, uh, so that is a very different message than saying this is ordinary influenza by another name, which was the most common treatment of it in, in the press. Or a, a third example in Phoenix, they wrote a little bit about it when the disease erupted in Boston, which was the first place in the United States to get hit by the disease came in waves. And the second wave was the deadly wave. Um, so when it's in Boston, they write a little bit about it in Phoenix. When it's in New Orleans, they write less about it in Phoenix. When it's actually in Phoenix, it disappears from the newspapers. Not a word initially. Uh, because, again, they didn't want any bad news out there that might hurt the war effort. Now, eventually, when it was impossible to ignore 
uh, the Phoenix paper did start writing about it. But again, initially to keep morale up and so forth and so on, uh, they ignored it. You know, in other newspapers, they simply, they didn't even print names of the people who died. Uh, and, you know, all of this had a impact on the public and it wasn't what they wanted. Instead of keeping morale up, it hurt morale more than the truth would have uh, because people knew, again, their neighbors are dying. In some cases, the bodies are lying in the house for days because there's no one to get, take it out. And they and people knew this was happening all around them. They knew that they were being lied to by the, by the media and by the public officials. And all that did was alienate them and, and cause them to feel that they had no one they could rely on except for themselves. Uh, and, you know, it sort, sort of split society apart. John, uh, John, for you, did you ever sit down and have a conversation about this with your grandparents? Uh, I'm assuming your parents are probably born in the 20s or, or late teens. Actually, my mother just died at 102 and she was born in 1918. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Wow. Uh, but so when I first started working on the book, uh, you know, my grandparents were dead. Uh, but I had a, a, an aunt who was considerably older than my mother. Uh, and when I told her that I was working on the book, I mean, she sort of like grabbed her to her chest and said, oh, my God, that, you know, that's the only time she ever saw her father to cry. That was because a couple directly across the street who had a couple of kids, you know, both of them died, uh, leaving several orphans, uh, which was not uncommon. Because as I said earlier, the 18 to 45 is like the peak age at which people were dying. So there were a lot of orphans created. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.